Greetings and salutations, YouTube. Friar Chuck here, and we are back with episode number three of w the West Virginia Mountaineers Dynasty Mode in College Football 25. In between episodes, I did do a little bit more recruiting. As you can see, I I've learned more about recruiting, and I've realized the hours at the top, that is the hours per week, not overall. So, use them things. And as you can see, we are at zero of 700 hours for the week. I actually got to take that guy off of my board. Um, we're continuing to hard sell some of these players. R Davin Raybolt, I don't know if we'll get him or not. I would like to find a quarterback. Um, I'm trying to look. Uh, Jabari Living, so we did go ahead and schedule a visit with. And I think we sent the house. I don't know if that was on there before. Um, and I think we did the same thing with Jordan Blank. Um, just trying to move up with them. I finished. Sc I scouted Christian Smith. Realized he was going to be a bust, so we have removed our interest some from him. Um, Oh, we scouted this guy, Terrence Richard, a uh, four-star prospect out of Brunswick, Georgia. Um, it's going to be real hard to get him because Georgia does have interest in him. So I'm hoping maybe just this hard push. We, we are the first team to offer him a scholarship. Um, we offered him a scholarship, and then we gave him the send the house. So I'm hoping that will come in and... Uh, don't help us land him. But we do have a meeting this week against FCS East. Um, and if you remember last week, we fell to 0-1 behind a heartbreaking loss to Penn State. Um, I'm starting to get more familiar with the passing mechanics and how they work, so I feel a little bit more comfortable um, doing that. Hopefully we can get a little bit more involved in the passing game. I've been playing Dynasty mode on my own uh, off screen, so I'm getting used to it through there. Um, and I think I've decided that for field goal kicking for now, I'm just going to simulate everything. Um, if it's a miss, it's a miss. If it's a make, it's a make. I mean, I think they'll be just as random with this. Just keep in mind, it's college kickers. You know, it's not like we're sending Justin Tucker out there every play. So, we do get the ball first here against FCS East, the FCS East astronauts. And Farmer gets a seam, and he is going to open the game with a kickoff return touchdown. West Virginia gets on the board early, and that is what we love to see. Rick Darius. It's ridiculous is what it is. Um, so, yeah, we will hit the Super Sim for this. Jump ahead. Jump to next play, and extra point is good. So I could probably do the extra points. I am going to still do kickoffs and punts. Um, but I really think we are putting ourselves at a severe disadvantage if I go out there and continue to kick kicks. So just going to simulate all the kicks and extra points. I will punt and deal with the punts and deal with the kickoffs. They actually have a pretty solid fullback. A 76 fullback, I wouldn't mind. Scooping him up in the transfer portal. First and 10 from the 13 now for the astronauts. And that is going to be a tackle behind the line of scrimmage for Trey Latham. And that is Aubrey Banks, our star 
free safety who came up big in the last game. He had pick six that was instrumental in us managing to make that even a semi-competitive game, and that's a sack. Sean Martin, and we have got it to a fourth and 16 from the seven. Whatever you do, don't hit the ki don't hit the kicker. And Farmer is on fire after that kickoff return, and they are going to send it out of bounds at the 38-yard line. I understand not wanting to kick to him, but that was a terrible, terrible putt. And so now we go to work. Garrett Green in the offense. And keep in mind, we've got to keep scouting quarterbacks because Green is a senior. So we will be losing him after this year, <laughs> no matter what we do. That's Clement in for the touchdown. Fourteen to nothing, early lead for West Virginia. And this is how it should be. We should be having this kind of success against FCS East. I overkicked that, but it doesn't really matter on an extra point. Or on a kickoff. It does matter on an extra point. Um, of course, when the offseason rolls around, we will be hitting up the transfer portal to see who... Um, to see who comes up. I know I've seen um, in other people's rebuilds that they've done, I've seen um, Isaiah Bond, the Texas wide receiver, come up. So that would be cool if we could snag him. He's already entered the transfer portal at least once because he left Alabama after uh, Nick Saban retired and came to Texas. Um, that's 4th and 12, so two really bad drives for FCS East. We'll see if they actually punt to him this time. They do. Oh, he's cooled off. That's not fair. Solid return. Gets us to the 39. I would have probably been just as well off handing that off. Running out of room here, people. Donaldson's got a seam. Touchdown, Mountaineers. 20 to nothing lead here. Okay, I actually kicked that one, but whatever. I didn't mean to. Oh, he actually brought it out. I was surprised. Fumble! Pick it up! It's a safety! It's even better! <laughs> Okay, so even better, I say that meaning we get the two points, plus we get a chance again to go down and score. And that is a 23 to nothing lead for West Virginia with five and a half minutes, uh, longer than five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. There's not a lot of plays that they want me to run. For this offense. 
looking for space. It's Donaldson. Donaldson gets a five yard gain. The ball moving. Ball on the 47. First and 10. Comes out throwing on first down. Threw that one a little too hard. Yeah, they picked up three yards. See who gets up here. Who gets open here? I didn't see that soon enough. He was open. And Bray is going to pick up the first down for us. Strub not moving quite as fast as some of the others, but that's okay. I think we've got, I think Clement's going to beat this guy off the top, and if the safety doesn't move, she did. So we'll just scramble with Green. Oh, I thought he was going to slip in. So she said. Ball at the six. For anyone that's wondering, yes, I am intentionally skipping over RPOs because I don't know how to run them. It's just the regular read option, I can do that, but sort of. Sometimes I forget what the buttons are because they are, it's literally reversed from Madden. Oh, that was my fault. That was a touchdown. Should have been a touchdown. We're running it again. Uh, touchdown, Mountaineers. C.J. Donaldson Jr. in for his second touchdown of the day. Simulate, simulated a kickoff, too. Not that big of a deal. Thirty to nothing against FCS East. They do. They do get some positive yardage there as they pick up two on the run. Four-yard run. This is a West Virginia is a very different team from my this off, my off screen dynasty. I'm using North Texas. North Texas and West Virginia are very different. I think my highest rated player on there is like an 83. Or no, my running back may be like an 86. But it's not very high. My quarterback plays pretty similar to Garrett Green. Farmer is killing it on these kick returns. That should have been picked. Very, very poor decision on my part. Second and 10 now from the 46. 11 seconds left in the first quarter. Thompson is going to scamper forward for a seven-yard gain. And that is going to take us to the end of the first. Averaging 9.3 yards per play. We have 30 points and only 55 passing yards. 
<laughs> has not been a good showing for FCS East. I don't know why they're so intent on us passing it. I guess because it's third and three. As aggressive as I am, Gunner has got a big leg, so him pinning him would be kind of difficult. Robinson on the little drive route, we pick up the first. We have eight first downs to their their zero. Another first down. CJ Donaldson is killing it today. And Gary Green are both on fire. Third touchdown of the day for Donaldson. Get him in that Heisman conversation. I mean, he's probably pretty high up there in total touchdowns because he had quite a few against... Uh, He had quite a few against Penn State, I think, too. And it'll come out to the 25. No attempt at a return. So, guys, we'll see this offense again. Seven to nothing. A little free snap eye candy for the defense. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Team is frustrated. <laughs> the outcome of the Penn State game. The defense, at least, is. <laughs> How dare you show up? But this is a this is a nice game to have. We actually get a preseason here. We got our we got our. Probably the hardest game on our schedule in Penn State. We got that out of the way. Now we get this as kind of our preseason. It's fair catch interference. Cowards. This is our preseason. We've got our first rivalry game next week against uh, Pitt. So even with the new passing mechanics, that's still not really a play that's available. I am very interested in Bray here. Yep. And that is another touchdown for West Virginia. Forty-four. Zero. Oh, our mascot, he's going to be ripped after this game. And our defense isn't even getting turnovers. Well, I mean, that's safety. I, if that was a special teams unit. So we've got nine points off of special teams. So something that I find funny about these FCS teams is there's only, like, so many of them in the game. And so you'll have, like, there's very easily probably somebody playing FCS East this week, too, besides us. Another sack. That's Lathan's. I don't know if it's his second sack. I know it's his second tackle for loss. Trying to throw one downfield. It didn't work. Fourth and 13 now from the 11. 
they have made no progress. Oh, I kind of thought he was going to break that tackle. I was like, if he does, that's a touchdown. Garrett Green, 162 yards, two touchdowns today. He's really not having crazy of a game just because of the field position we've had. Yep, overthrew that one. I don't know if we would have scored on that play, but we would probably got to the one or the two. We will score on that one, though. Green is going to run it in himself with the touchdown. To give us a nice little fitty piece. In the second quarter. FCS East, the worst FCS school. So, again, I've, I've I said this, I think, in the first, or I maybe, I don't know if it was in this series or not, or if I said it against when I was trying to do UConn. Anyway, this game is, they tried very hard to make it, so there was a noticeable gap in teams with better players as opposed to, the, you know, worse players, which is why... Me playing as West Virginia here, I've put up 51 in two quarters against FCS East. And when I played FCS, FCS Southwest with North Texas, I had to come from behind. I won, but I had to come from behind. They picked up a first down. Yay. They shouldn't have. We very easily could have made the tackle there, but. Pretty sure that's their fullback they keep handing off to. They're going to get a little bit of a drive here, guys. Don't let them do anything. It's like playing a fucking military school. They're... Like, I see, I think they have a military school playbook because they do not pass. I guess it's Army. Pro Army probably is the only military school now that they still plays like this because air force is a straight air raid which i mean makes sense they're being air force and everything but um and navy i think the last couple years just tried to put in a pro style offense um and i think from what i've gathered on like twitter and stuff i think that army playbook is supposed to be really fun um i mean if you like doing options and stuff like that I mean, I'd go for it, too. What do you have to lose? I'm not saying it's impossible for them to come back, but... First down there for FCS East, the old astronauts. So, I think... Depending on how everything works out, I would like to do multiple Dynasty series on this game. Um, West Virginia is kind of our, uh, you know, we've made, it's a really good school, or not really good, a really good school would be us using Michigan or Georgia. Um, fourth and one, they go to, they're really going to kick the field goal here. So we don't want to be shut out. It's assuming they can hit this, though. And he does make the kick. 
to make it a nice 51 to 3 game. But once I get more accustomed to the game and the controls and everything, um, I would like to try a Dynasty series with a worse team. Maybe I go back to Yukon and try and rebuild them. Um, We got a little rock there. They're smart. They're playing off. Ooh, sacked. Okay, FCS, they're kind of turning up here. I see you. Don't play tight. Well, that was a unfortunate drive. They got six seconds, though. I mean, I think if I'm them, I take, I just tell everybody to run to the end zone and. And my safety is the closest one. Not fast enough to run it back, though. Defense's first turnover of the game to end the half. C.J. Donaldson, 72 rush yards, averaging 8 yards a carry, 3 touchdowns. He is having a great game. That was just a pure, that was a case of their defense getting obliterated by my blockers. And with that, let's take the old country roads on our way back to Mountaineer Field. All right, Kevin, about ready to start the second half here. All right, second half here. As Oh, it was Kansas State that lost. I was going to say, I think somebody ranked pretty high lost. It was Kansas State. They lost to Tulane. I mean, Tulane is kind of a... It's weird because, like, if the 12-team playoff would have started last season, Tulane would have made the playoffs. But I don't know how good they actually are, so... Okay, like, I really need to look at this team. Why is their best player not starting? Or their best quarterback not starting? Yeah, I wouldn't mind picking that guy up. They have a 76 overall fullback. No wonder they keep using him. And no wonder they don't pass. Their wide receivers are terrible. Of course, they're... They're two best wide receivers they've got sitting on the bench. So, I don't know what this team's about. Oh, they've got another quarterback in. Covered the pitch too well on that. We had everything broken down too well. <laughs> broken down so much that he couldn't react. Okay, so there was the wear and tear for Martin. Looks like his arm and his chest are kind of getting to getting a little banged up there. Um. Okay, so while I'm thinking about it. Said it was 49 to 3. It's not 49 to 3. I'm actually going to take Garrett Green out of the lineup. <laughs> I don't want him getting hurt. 
don't make a living off it, but when you get a nice little chunk like this, maybe you find another way to <laughs> get it. Stop. Um, and we got that sophomore. We got that sophomore quarterback that I would really like to see some of, because he may be our quarterback next year, depending on how scouting and or depending on how recruiting and stuff goes. So. Fuck, I hate running this to the side of this close. So Mark Yall is in at quarterback. Um, can I get some like decent plays? That's the type of explosive play you love to start a drive with. First down from the 42. They'll pick up four, second and six coming. Well, this offense came into the game knowing they wanted to be physical, they wanted to establish the line of scrimmage, and they're running downhill right at this defense, and they're churning out positive yardage early. On second down, looking to throw. Shit, he's left-handed. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big... Well, um, I can tell you right now, he will not be my quarterback next year. Unless something drastic happens, I cannot stand the tainted quarterbacks. In game or in real life. I have a theory as to why there's so few left-handed quarterbacks in the NFL and stuff. Pretty good cross body throw though. Mark Hill gets his first touchdown of the season. And we go up fifty eight to nothing, an eighty one yard drive. But yes, I have a theory that the reason why there's so few left-handed quarterbacks is because all the left-handed quarterbacks uh, played baseball in high school as well, and their coach told them to focus on baseball and become pitchers. Oddly enough, like the they've got a first and ten at the thirty four. A lot of the uh, NFL quarterbacks that were baseball players, at least the good ones, didn't play <laughs> uh didn't play uh four pitchers. Like Russell Wilson I think was a second baseman. Kyler Murray is an outfielder. Uh, Jameis Winston was a pitcher, I think. Um, Matt Stafford played baseball in high school. I don't know for sure what position he played, because he was on the same high school team as uh, Clayton Kershaw. They both went to uh, South Lake Carroll. I think. South Lake Carroll or Highland Park? Highland Park, I think it was. I don't know. I get those two... It's those two snooty ass towns mixed up all the time. Whichever one it was, uh, Jordan Spieth, the golfer, he also went to high school there because they were the first, um, they're the only high school in America to have a NFA a Super Bowl champion, a World Series champion, and a Masters champion, which is kind of cool, I guess. Okay, a little bit tougher field position now, or actually a lot bit tougher field position. So we'll see what. And Robinson is going to beat his guy off of the line, and that is going to be another touchdown for the Mountaineers. And that's 
Pick is up and good. 65 to 3 lead. The game's over at this point. Like, literally, the only reason I haven't simmed out of it is because I want to use uh, Marchiel. I don't know. <laughs> This is the problem with some of these players. Is I, don't know, I don't know them, so I don't know how to pronounce their names. There's so many freaking college players. You know, at least, it, you know, when we do a Madden series, I know how the people's names are pronounced. So there's not that many of them. So, Oklahoma State won if you're paying attention to the ticker. Down at the bottom. Um, I think it said that Oklahoma lost. Um, I think Oklahoma State is going to end up being our biggest competitor in the Big 12. I think it's going to end up probably being between Oklahoma State and Arizona. Because um, I'm like four games into my other, uh, my other dynasty. And Arizona State has jumped up to like eighth in the country. Seventy-two on the boys. Okay, <laughs> seventy to three. I'm calling it. We don't need to do this anymore. I got a quarter out of that quarterback. No, they gave up a field goal. We scored again. Scored again. Eighty-two to six. Thirty, twenty-one, twenty-one, and ten in the final quarter. Nico Marchial ended up being the player of the game. <laughs> Only started the second half. 260 yards and four touchdowns. Including a couple of bombs. Like, in all honesty, the receivers got more open for him than they did for Green. That's going to do it for us from here for Jesse Palmer, David Pollock. I'm Reese Davis, and this has been another presentation of Sports College Football. I kind of feel bad we didn't give Green a chance to, like, boost his stats a ton. We had 629 yards of total offense. 207 rushing yards. 422 passing yards. Split out over two players. 346. What weird-ass quarterback rating system are they using? 346.4. 209 points. How are these ratings working? Anybody that might know anything more about college football, please explain to me what those ratings mean. Because in the NFL, they use two passer rating systems. They use the traditional one, which goes up to 158.3, and then the true QBR. And that goes to 100. Not 346. Rushing Donaldson at 116 yards and three touchdowns. Green also had a rushing touchdown. Uh, Jaden Bray finished with two two receiving touchdowns, six catches, 162 yards. He will probably be player of the game. Player of the week. Justin Robinson was right behind him, though, with 132 yards, two touchdowns. Um, Clement had that one big catch. Uh, Donaldson only had one catch. Blocking, we do anything exciting. Milam had nine pancakes, but he gave up a sack. Uh, defensively, Anthony Wilson had a good game. Ten tackles, two TFLs, and an interception. So, shout out to him. We got credit for the safety, I wonder. Preston Fox, a wide receiver. <laughs> okay. And then kick returns. Farmer only got two kick returns. And 
He got 98 yards on him, and his longest one was 98, so that's fun. Punt returns, 5 for 53, a long of 32. Huh, we'll take it. 80 to 6, absolute drubbing of FCS East. Poor guys. I know we didn't play the whole game, but come on. Come on. I can't, like, guarantee that we would have put up... That we would have hung 90 to 100 on them, but... 80 is bad enough. Okay. Uh, let's go to coach abilities real quick. Okay, so I've got quarterbacks maxed out. Might as well go ahead and get linebackers, I guess. So we are all done with recruiting for this week. There's nothing else we can do. So let's advance to the next week. See what's happened. Uh... Timmy, I'm tired of them. What? How did our championship contender status go down? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, recruiting update. Femi Scipio has narrowed down his top five schools, and we are sixth. Uh, Jordan Blank has narrowed down his top five, and we are fourth. So we may need to make a pretty far push on him if we can. Uh, da Davin Reinbolt is a four-star quarterback. He's narrowed down his top five, and we are... Or no, he's narrowed down his top eight, and we are sitting at... Um, we're sitting at number one with a pretty comfortable margin. We're also the only person that's offered him so far. Um... So I'm going to kind of keep him there. Tommy Vigil, the five-star left end, has reached his top eight. We're in fourth. Um, he does have three other offers from Ole Miss, Auburn, and LSU. He's from Miss Mississippi, so all three of those others are a lot closer than we are, if that matters to him. Pro potential says deal breaker. Pro potential. Proximity to home for Jordan Blake. We could definitely sell that. So I've got the hard sell option on him. I'll use it. Yes, we are taking on the Pittsburgh Panthers in the backyard brawl. I don't know where we'll where we're playing. I nearly lost to Baylor. Oh, we're just having rivalry games all over the place. Got a comfort for Trevor Games, too. Let's take a look at the top 25 real quick. Um, Georgia, Ohio State, Oregon, Ole Miss, and Alabama are your top five. Penn State's at six. Michigan is at seven. I don't know why they drop so much. They just beat Texas. Missouri's eighth. Utah ninth. Arizona 10th, let's see, that's what I said. Well, actually, Utah's in the Big 12 now, too, so we have to deal with them. So, Utah, Arizona, Oklahoma State, all going to be problems. Um, and that's why I'm not too worried about having such a good team. Because, I mean, Utah's at 85, Oklahoma State's an 85, Arizona's an 81, but that doesn't mean they won't still be good. Uh, Louisville's at 12, Kansas is at 13, NC State at 14. Miami has jumped up to 15. LSU's at 16. NC State beat Tennessee 58 to nothing. That's a quality win. Uh, Clemson's at 17. They are 1-1, one one, but I think their one loss was to Georgia. Um, Washington is 18th. They're 2-0, and though. I don't know why they're so low. Uh, Florida State 19th, Oklahoma's at 20. They lost to Houston last week, 35-28. They played Tulane this week. 
Notre Dame is 21st after a stunning 18-point loss to Northern Illinois. They play the Purdue Spoilermakers next week. Wisconsin has jumped into the top 25 after a win against FCS Northwest. Surely that's not what did it. They play Alabama this week. Texas got killed by Michigan, so they're down to 23rd now. Iowa State has jumped into the ranking at 24 after they killed Iowa. And Kansas State is at 25th after a loss to Tulane. So Kansas State and Arizona play, so that one of them has got to lose, which will help us. I really hope we can beat Pittsburgh. Um... Beating Pittsburgh, especially if it's a very big win, that could propel us into the top 25, especially if Texas loses again. They're 0-2. They lost to Colorado State as well. If Texas loses and Arizona beats Kansas State, we might jump into the top 25. You think Arch would be willing to transfer to... West Virginia. In the coaches poll, 25 for NC State is quite low. I feel like they should be higher. I mean, that's that a 58 to nothing win over Tennessee. That's a that's a good game. Not like what we did. It's not really a quality win. I mean, we did what we had to do and then some, so um, I don't think anybody in the Big 12 has entered conference play yet. The Big 12. Excuse me. Uh, no, Utah and um, Baylor have entered conference play. So we are second to last in the Big 12. I don't really know why. <laughs> We're first in points for because we scored 110. UCF's having some bad luck. They've. Well, oh, they're 2 0. Oh. Okay, no wonder. I was, was going to say they've. Iowa State's supporting some strong defense. Cincinnati's given up 62 points. So, yeah, Iowa State. I mean, there's lots of good teams here. Utah and Arizona are going to be tough. Arizona State, I'm not too terribly worried about. I'm not really that worried about BYU. I don't know about Cincy. Colorado is going to be a problem just because the ratings makers love them. Travis Hunter is going to be an issue shooter. Sanders is going to be a problem. They're not really that good, but um, Houston could be a problem. Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State. TCU has a surprisingly high rating. Um, in my North Texas dynasty, I just lost by like 50 or 60 to Texas Tech. So, um, I had a few players I wanted to look at in recruiting. Okay, we've moved into first for this left tackle, which is nice because we will need a left tackle badly, and getting a five-star left tackle would go a long way towards replacing him. He is... First at his position and 16th overall. Uh, this guy locked us out, so we can remove him. Reinbolt is the third-ranked quarterback, so that's nice. Tommy Vigil, five-star defensive end. I mean, we got to... We've already sent the house. That's terrifying. Okay. Can't do anything else with him. Vitaly, we jumped into his top 10, but that's about it. Um, George Blank, we're fourth. I can't do anything else with him. Uh, other than... I can schedule a visit.
how is Iowa State a lower tier opponent? They're actually ranked. Um, Kansas State, I guess. So we'll schedule that for week eight, and we'll sell the the proximity to home since he actually cares. Love to get this guy. Five star athlete. This is gonna be a running back. Oh, we've dropped to two on this tight end. We're really oh, we're fighting Pittsburgh. That's fun. He's got a visit scheduled for the Kansas game. Um. Trent Hansen, we've moved out to two on. Okay. We've offered this guy a scholarship. We're not anywhere near his. I'll keep the scholarship offer there, but I'm not really too worried about it. Um, okay. We are first for this guy. I think mostly because we've already offered him. And nobody else has. But. Georgia is going to be dead. dead. It's going to be difficult. I would wish I could already schedule a visit for him. I'm going to offer this guy. And we'll send the house. This is somebody that we need to. He has no interest in us, and we may be way too far gone. Again, somebody we may be too far gone on. We don't have enough hours left. That's okay, we can make up the difference with this, this, and we'll search his social media. So hopefully by next week he's on there. I don't know if we'll be, I'm going to give this guy one more week and then I'll probably pull, pull off of him. I have the hours to... Well, I might as well use the hours that I have left to offer him a scholarship, and then we'll go. For, we'll move on from there. So, oh, Miami signed two four-star recruits already. Um, two uh, two offensive tackles. So they have the highest-rated recruiting class. Um. But if we ended up getting both of these guys, Bale and Reinbolt, that would make us that would go a long way. One because one of them is a five star. I'd really like to get this guy too. But that is going to do it for today's episode. I hope you uh, enjoyed that um, that slaughtering. Kind of feel bad for those guys, but it is what it is. Oh, let's... Uh, I kind of want to look at these stats. Garrett Green's having an okay year. All three of his rushing touchdowns came last week. Okay. Oh, he only had one receiving touchdown against Penn State. Milam has the most sacks given up.
Okay, that's that's it. That's the episode. No mas. Um, in the next episode, we will take on the 2-0 and Pittsburgh Panthers. Hopefully get the win. Um, I really think that would go a long way towards getting us ranked. Um, and that will be a nice gear up for Big 12 play, which is going to be an absolute bloodbath. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'll see you all in the next one. This is Friar Check saying uh, bye-bye.